Hey everybody, Asher here, and welcome back to more Road Warden, where we are picking up exactly where we left off, making who I can only assume is a new friend at Foggy, or with Foggy at Foggy Lake, and can I pull up the map again? We're here, but should we have come this way? I don't know. There's a lot of game that's over here that we've missed out on, but at the same time, we've been able to explore and sort of enjoy the world here. So what we're going to be doing here is continuing. I expect that we'll be done with the first day, <laughs> I, I assume, but we've got a lot of talking left to do. We're hungry, we're smell terrible, we lost some vitality, but let's continue here. <coughs> Just oh, apologies for the cough and everything. I do have nice things to drink. I suggest you get a drink as well. Sit back, relax, and enjoy as we ask about just some of the basic questions for our giantest of a host here. Any interesting beast you hunt for? Oh, I hunt for nothing, she smirks. Not since I lost my arm, and the boys outside are not made for it either. They're, they have no drive to fight, you see, and they grew up to be wimps. They sometimes club down a hare, but we're about foraging and bird traps now. The folks in creeks do the real hunting, she adds after a pause. Runners, moflons, rats, sometimes a buffalo or a saurian. We have no soil for fields, so game meat is all we have left. So the, the soil and everything here, that's going to be a big problem, I guess, during the course of this game. She stretches out getting even taller. Do you hunt often? So we have some options here. As a fighter and someone who is surviving on the road by herself, we do have various options. And once again, these are characterization options here. Uh, I don't don't enjoy killing. Sometimes I set up traps and Havavon. You won't get much game outside of rats in here. Okay, I do. Making a monster bleed makes me feel alive. Is certainly a thought here, but Kira, as we know, does love and appreciate animals as well. So we're going to kind of go the big face here, trying not to risk big game. Huh, that's hardly a hunt, is it? She leans forward, chuckling. Picking up a dead bird from a loop is not the same as pushing away a warm corpse that was just pinning you down to the ground. She looks towards the open window shutters. Not the same, but probably smarter. A friend of mine was a real huntress for a year or so. So we have some other questions here. Your name's Foggy, and this is Foggy Lake. Ah, the lake has no name. She moves her cup away and leans forward, resting her elbow on the table. Her voice is playful, warm, yet, I mean, but there will be stories about this place, believe me, and about passing by the lake while getting to Foggy's. I may not be a dragon slayer or a holy woman, but one way or another, my soul will live on to my name, tied to these walls. She looks at you in silence, then bursts into laughter. You could swear she was making the, char the jars shake. <laughs> ah, I'm plenty fine being vain. So, how do we feel about vanity here? It's not everything that's vain is wrong. She observes your silence, then lets out a chuckle. Huh, that's interesting. That's not what I actually did make a response here. Very true. Eating tidbits may be dumb, but in fair shares, keeps our souls stronger. So, the spot where her right arm should be. Do we go for the sensitive questions here? Well, these are both pretty sensitive questions. She leans back, moving her shoulders and chest up and down as if she's having a soundless chuckle. <sighs> Not one I'm going to share with a newcomer, dear. Stay alive until next autumn. I'll open a cask of cold cider and tell you quite a tale. It has treason, treasure, monsters, and dark spells. But I'm way too sober for it now. She grabs her cup. She winks and turns it into an awkward blink. Oh, so she's she's having a good time. She's not offended by anything here. So let's go ahead and ask here. Can you move things with your thoughts? She chuckles. Why can't you? So I don't know much about magic, which is true. Without a teacher, there's not much you can do. My grandparents used to be great mages, but not great enough to survive the plague. She scar her scarred lips form a grimace. My ma got no talent from him. After a year of training, she was hardly able to move a feather a foot. I always knew I had a strong pneuma in my blood, but there was no soul there to teach me how to use it. She examines her cup. The ladle stops moving. I'm trying to figure it out by myself, but I may not have enough summers left. So we can ask about the place outside as well. Are you going to build a wall? Why not? Then grow my connections to the villages, buy more hard drinks, build another shed, a cabin even, and hire a private warden for the road, you know, for my guest. She sips her cups looking at you, but in the distant future, we at Creeks need to take care of the eastern route, clear it for the traders. Without trade, all I have is locals, and they don't even use dragon bones. Why do you care, dear? Are you planning to stay around? So we have a few options here. Remember, if we go back to the journal, which we can check at any time, 
We are looking for a new life. That's if it comes up in context, I'll tell you why. But for now, we have some various options here. At least a few years. Her smile would suit a bear. If you know how to use that axe of yours, you'll be more than welcomed. On this side of Hag Hills, we need folks who can handle themselves. No matter if they're road wardens, mercenaries, or guards, not just soldiers, she chuckles. So let's ask her about the dranks. The pricey ones are gifts I received or treasures I found them when I was young. I also bought a few I. I like to offer something unusual to the wealthier or more promising guests, she tilts her cup. I dabbled with some recipes myself. I have plenty of brewing tools, though I can name maybe half of them. Still, from ales to hard drinks, I've had some success. So changing the topic. I must say, love, I rarely met folks with this many questions. What's beneath them? So we could just go to some of these various options here, wanting to get you know, know you better. We all need friends, don't we? Well, let's just tell the truth here. Getting to know you better. Her scarred lips make an unclear grimace. Words can only get you so far. You won't know somebody by meeting them once every few seasons. You need to stay around, see others' deeds, listen to their coughs and cries. Travelers don't know folks, just stories. Her voice gets somber. Trust my years when I say so. So that's Foggy. She's great. And she does not take shit. All right. So we do have some various options here. We can ask about Asterion. We can ask about spending the night. We can ask about looking for work, which I probably do need to do here. Um, we've kind of talked about the peninsula a little bit. We can ask about necromancers. Let's see what she has for sale. Now you're talking. Well, I can serve you some of my cooking. No food rations, mind you. Need what we can save for the winter season. Let's just say you give me a dragon. And in return, I'll cook you for you four times. You just need to ride up when you're hungry. Ooh, I'm hungry right now. And other than that, you won't take any wood or stone, are you? Seeing you shrug, she waves it off and heads towards the trap door. After a minute, she shows up with a sack that clangs after every step. I can sell you some scraps. She puts out a couple of iron clasps, nails, broken steel blade. A value trash. We found them while foraging. We don't have a furnace in creeks, but you could sell these bits and pieces to someone else. She observed you for a moment and shrugs. Let's discuss the price. So we take a look at first. We can buy, ooh, that is all my money for iron scraps. But as we know from the backstory, that uh, steel and iron is in short supply. However, I, I am very hungry. I will pay for four meals. Ooh. Can I, can I buy a head? Can I buy more meals? <laughs> oh my god, just the question. I'd like to eat. She stretches her arms out and go, ooh, we got two, two bonus stuff back. We got five hours till dusk, too. Give me a moment. You sit down to a clean table. After a moment, the keeper brings you boar offals, a couple of carrots, and a refreshingly cold cup of water. Once you're done, Foggy packs the leftovers for you as a snack for the rest of the day and mentions that you've already paid for another three meals. We could eat twice. Um, let's check our inventory real quick. Do we have anything that we might want to sell? Apparently, we can't use that right now. We have a simple arrow. We can, we're not going to sell our horse. Um, yeah, I don't know if we have too much. Unless she wants to sell wild plants. Nah, love, come back when you got something to sell for a profit or maybe hang on the wall. Alright, well, we're not doing much selling it. Could I spend a night or two under your roof? She approaches the window above the table and looks outside. Uh, your beast won't make it easy for us, dear. She places her hand on the shutters. It's not a city inn. I don't cook for a smile. I don't work to feel noble. I allow s folks to lie down there for free. She points to the bear fur with her broad chin. But that's about it. If your horse stays outside, it'll lure the beast to us. But if we move it in here upstairs, it'll leave its droppings on my floor. She gets annoyed even by the idea. If you want to rest here, love, be ready to either pay with a coin or some food rations or spend the night keeping your mount quiet and clean after it in the morning, will you? So, technically, technically we can stay here, I guess. Does that unlock on the map? Yes, it does show nighttime shelter, so that's good. Well, let's ask the big question. I'm looking for a St Asterion. She looks at you for a longer moment without the slightest movement, and why do you think he's here? Oh my god, this is the total answer Kira would give. Is he here? Her face darkens and scratches her knee. Don't upset me. Um, yeah, see that she has a good way of putting her foot in her mouth. Right now, I suspect everyone would are looking for crews. You could have been swallowed by a toad for all I know. I'm just asking for help. 
All right, with her voice uh, remains calm, her eyes are distrustful. You scared me a little bit. I don't want any nasty rumors. Sure, some of those who travel through Foggies disappear on the road, but it's a safe place. We don't hold slaves. She waves towards the trap door. You can check and see. Well, when's the last time you saw him? She glances at the window. Same as the others. In the late days of spring, we were waiting for his return. Me and all the villages then moved on. I had no idea where he went. All of the villages? She turned towards you with the fierceness of a bear. That's what I said. Um, she rests her head across the table. A customer and an errand runner. That's what's there to say. Your additional questions don't get many more answers. She brings up the man's looks and equipment without adding much to what you already learned from Tulia. He is paying with dragons, rarely bartered. That's what city folk do, I seeking riches, then locking themselves in a chamber, prisoners of their might. As well said. And that's part of the reason that kind of want to break away from the city. Her chuckle makes you think of a wolf's growl. Oh, Foggy. Did he do any jobs for you? She pressing, tugging against her cheek and lips. Well, I'm not sure. He was bringing me news or delivering my messages, sold me some stuff, sometimes brought a th bought a thing or two. His life wasn't really that riveting, just a mug guzzler sitting in the corner, patching his clothes. As for selling anything unusual, something that hints where he went, something you found for a weird place, or something useful. Hints to where he went, she frowns. I'll tell you if I think of anything. You don't sound bothered by his disappearance. You see me as someone eager to make friends with a vagabond? I'll tell you. I'll, I'll take it as a compliment to my skills as a tavern keep. Folks come and go. Their faces disappear. Friends die in my arms. She pauses. Families fade. There was a different road warden years ago. And there's another one now. But there's only one Foggy in the north. And one Illin, that slow son of mine, and one Creeks. I only have so many tears to spare. Very well said. Definitely good that we're walking away from that. She doesn't trust me enough. Well, I guess a good way to get trust is to look for work. She grins. I somehow doubt you're here to forge for me, love. Not that I have any room for another soul. Ugh, let me think. She runs her eyes over the shelves and the trophies, but it's the rocks surrounding the fireplace that catch her attention. The folks at Old Pagos are weirdly quiet. They are supposed to drop two wagons of rocks in my place. Can you check on them? Just find out if they're fine. You mentioned the payment. It won't take much work from a rider. You can get there and back in less than a day. Just ride west of here until you get to the crossroads, then another one. Turn west again and you'll find the village. I'll give you, let's say, a dragon bone? You mentioned that. It's not much, but she waves off. A road warden should get familiar with all the villages anyway, right? Just do this when you have a chance. I'll have more coins for you once you prove that you can be trusted with simpler tasks. Okay, well, Old Pagos is, I guess, one of the villages here. What does she say? Ride west, hit a crossroads, turn west again. Okay. What can you tell me? It may be one of the oldest villages in the north, but even if not, it's safe with strong walls and safe roads. Their crops are weak, but for generations now, they've been cutting stone and building for other tribes in exchange for supplies. Some time ago, they tied themselves to the monks, and now they don't look kindly on those who don't follow the order of truth. Hoo -hoo. She pauses, twisting her lips on one side, choosing her words carefully. But they're plenty fine folks, true believers, something lost in the city, not ones to deal in slave trading and pillage. All right, so she's told us a bit about the peninsula. I do want to know about the necromancers. She rubs her chin. I don't like what they're doing one bit. But I can't blame them. The folks of White Marshes struggle, and they don't know how to protect their kids, their elders. Uh, Orentius, their priest, she cracks her shoulders. Oh, he's a quiet man, but preaches like a zealot, always looking like he's on the verge of crying. She opens the door with a wave of her hand, letting in some fresh air. She looks at the lake. They used to trade in lumber, those from marshes, until Howler's Dell started selling their own trees for better prices. The trade to marshes died, and so came the hunger. She looks at you with an unclear grimace on her lips. You may judge them, but at least their preacher gave them hope, even if it's tied to black magic. Oh god, and it's like, I'd like to eat, based on that story. No, I don't think so. So we still don't know what happened with old Pagos. What can you tell me about the peninsula? She frowns. I'm not one to spread tales among strangers. First, show me what you're made of. So she won't tell any rumors or anything. I guess it's time to get to work. Okay, so we have foragers, or we could wash ourselves at the lake. I am feeling pretty dirty, but let's talk to the foragers first. Once the man in black fur hears your step, he nudges his companion and nods towards you. They put away the old noose traps they are trying to fix, proper for hares and small birds. 
but the tall one spreads his arms, thundering his loud welcome. Ha ha, Road Warden, I, I guess we're going to see each other a lot. I'm Elin, the shorty here is Zevi. The man in black fur looks up, frowning. There's also the one-handed man you saw in the attic. Unlike the rest of the staff, he has an unkept beard and worn clothes made of blue fabric, patched with scraps of flower sacks. He's looking down to examine a trap, but his shoulders are slumped, eyes absent. Ian doesn't introduce you. So we say, Kira, nice to meet you. Uh, were you at Pelts of the North yet, friend? He blushes. How's Delit doing? So... I think we tell him the truth. I think after getting pumped up a bit by Foggy, it's worth saying that I haven't been to Pelt to the North yet. Ah, bummer! It's on the southern road. They're kind to travelers. These hunters wanted to buy hard drinks and healing potions from us. The innkeep is their boss, but just wait till you meet uh, Dali Dalit? Dalit. She played dice with us for a good hour and knows all sorts of tales about monsters. In her smile, ha, ah, must be really bored, that one. His smile turns to her grin. Better say hi to her for us. Uh, Zavi adjusts his black coat cloaks. Our traps won't fix themselves. What do you bring us? Ilan frowns at the interruption, but says nothing. So. Turn to one. Well, okay, let's get straight to the point. Do you know Tulia? The man gives you a surprised glance, but then looks down and crosses his arm, holding his hand under his shoulder. I'm a new man now. There's nothing that ties me to the army. He has the accent of city folk, same as yours. So let's just follow it up, not by prying too hard here. He takes a deep breath, his voice close to a whisper. There's a fog in my soul. I was on the eastern road, hungry and sick, praying for the right to send its beast to me and save me from the pains of living. I remember the touch of fur and the breath of my neck and the claws pinning me to the ground. I was waiting with my eyes closed. Then I woke up in the middle of the night, still feeling. I got back on my feet, waiting until I reached the light of this tavern without much as a bruise. Foggy may have no faith in her heart, but the right used her kindness to give me a second chance. Ilum frowns at the man's words, and there's contentiousness, or cautiousness, although it could be contentiousness, in his voice. He may be crazy, but it's true he came here after midnight, raving. Maybe the monsters didn't like his scent. Okay, that's probably cautiousness. So you forgot everything? He hides his stump in the palm of his hand and crawls up. I've seen a dragon eating a tree, an ape that tore away the head of a monstrous cat, and a wolf without fur that was as quick as lightning. Now leave me alone, evil spirit. Let my shame rest. He's shaking. Let him be. I, Zevi, grunts at you. Nothing wrong about a man trying to forget. Ilan rubs his chin. A furless wolf friend? I've heard about one. Our tribe folks saw in the heart of the woods. A nasty beast. Let's hope it won't find a mate for breeding. It charges at you like a runner and jumps right at your throat. Oh, it sounds lovely. So even the hunters stay away a bit. Too bad we have no crossbows. I better avoid the deep woods without one. So, let's see if I can get some more. CV nods and Ilan's voice gets louder. Glad to hear that. We're planning on doing some bird catching. Hunt without killing. Maybe not today, but in nine days? Hmm, okay, maybe a little bit later. What do you say? Why would you need my help with birds? Ilan glances at the cords used for snares. Ah, oh, these won't do. I want to catch a runner this big. Hmm. Didn't we see one? Yeah, I want to say we saw one at the foraging grounds before. And bring it here alive. Want it meets wants it meat that We want its meat for later. The man with one hand interrupts him. His voice is weak but disdainful. Beast ought to be dealt with, not tame. Bonding with monsters brings only death. Ha ho, bring us full bill bellies and winters, squawks TV. So how much can you pay? I mean it's just a tiny it's just a scary trip, but it won't take that long, Ellen shrugs. Just show up here at noon or before it, and we'll be back in a few hours. You'll get five dragons, two if the bird dies. That's a good price for one afternoon. So we can't leave our horse by Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Ellen waves his hand just like his mother. The idiot will take care of it. The one handed man starts to object, but a harsh shut up from Zevi makes him sigh. His shoulders sag. Ooh, he's really a defeated person. Elon goes on. He's a loony and would stumble over his own feet on a trip, but does what he needs to do, or does what he needs when told to. And you know he won't steal it. He hates animals. So, what's your plan? Elon grabs the rope and shakes it in front of you. We would catch its necks. Your part would be to keep it from running. Don't hurt it, just make it busy enough for us to surround it. Well, you shouldn't need weapons for it, friend, but you may look for something worthwhile in Howler's Dell, Elon points west. Uh, Akakios is about trade. Not much for idle talk, but he sells things for all of his folks. 
Now it does sound dangerous, but fine. I'll be back in nine days after that. So we do have a new entry for bird hunting. Do so. We still need to prepare and you better do so as well. But don't make us wait too long. Let's not test the bird's patience. Just come one day before afternoon. All right. Do you get travelers here often? Nah, you may very well be the last one this season. Sometimes a group of adventurers, who knows why, and southern traders in the spring and autumn. Most of our visitors are from the villages, usually creeks and gale, creeks and gale rocks. They leave goods at our place or just outside, and my mom barters with, uh, in their name with the others. I mean, rocks, timber, furs, barreled fish can wait a few days. And what about the peninsula? Zevi lets out a sigh. Ugh, not much here, I. Trees, rocks, ponds. I've never been to Howlers. He starts, but then Elin chips in. I have a couple of times. A nice place, kind folk, lots of grain. They have but one trader, Akakios. He pays poorly, but at least doesn't waste one's time. Get straight to the point. See, he thinks for a bit. And they're so tall, twice as tall as he is. He points to Zevi, who frowns and squawks back at him. Bullshit. You gossip for the next few minutes, but the things they share with you are of little use. They end up saying you should speak with Foggy instead. She used to travel a lot and speaks with every visitor, so we just walk away. We could wash ourselves in the lake. I mean... Oh boy. <laughs> that's, not, that's a lot of text for washing yourself in the lake. You enter the bridge and move the edge. Somewhere below you notice a glimmer. Hey, you, step back. Without even thinking, you leap toward the yard. A long, teeth-filled mouth breaks to the water surface, splashing in every direction. It bites the empty place where you're just standing, where its front limbs, thick-scaled and ending with its claws, are larger than your fingers, land on the wood. Once the Saurian's yellow eyes notice that you're outside its reach, it nonchalantly slides into the lake. You hear laughter coming from the yard. Ellen is running with help but now stands with his hands on his thighs, crackling without rest. D.V., on the other hand, looks at you with worry. You see a hand kept beneath his cloak as if he was reaching for something. What are you doing? I, this lake isn't for outsiders. Uh, this is the true answer. You could have warned me first. He adjusts his cloak so that he's fully covered. How could I know a road warden can't handle a day without a bat? Do you need some rose water with it? <laughs> oh, his companion stops laughing. Tells his companion to get back to work. They move towards the gate. All right, I think we're done here. So we have some options. And if we... I want to look at the journal real quick. Because we do have a mission for um, trying to go to a few different places. We have Old Pagos, a village of the western settled, settled on barren soil where we need to get some information. We have White Marshes. But there is a place that I've heard mentioned here a little bit that um, it's like these three places will sound like they'll all go to different villages. We have a necromancy place over here somewhere. We have old Pagos that they said follow a crossroad to the west. But we're going to keep going east. Back out into the wild. The road east is beaten and clean with enough space to fit two wagons side by side. You pass by a few plum trees, apple trees, and cherry trees, but many more stumps, likely belonging to what has been turned into Foggy Lake. The life in the plains is busy and loud, but so far you don't see any lurking beast. Judging by the many trampled parts of the meadows and fresh wood trails, the foragers search this corner of the peninsula quite often, and they didn't leave much behind. You reach a shimmering pond at the edge of the forest. You ride beneath two trim trees growing on opposite sides of the path like columns reading to the, leading to the White's, White's Temple. Shouts and heavy steps prepare you for trouble ahead. Two shells are circling around each other. One of them is a four-legged Saurian with dark gray skin, as long as you're palfrey but only knee-high. It's wandering left and right along the bank, hissing repetitively, sticking its split tongue out and then retracting it. The stout monster doesn't look like a born human hunter of humans, but its long tail is swinging like a whip, for now only threateningly so, but you don't doubt that it, getting hit by it would likely break your bones. The second one, the second shell, belongs to a brown-skinned man wearing leather pant, a long wooden woolen cloak, not wooden cloak, you wouldn't want a wooden cloak, and the matching pelt of a wolf on his head and shoulders, like a hunting hound. His voice is both gentle and scared. Oh boy. And he's stretching his hands out in front of him, trying to make the beast stay away as if it's a mouflon. 
So we literally got the Chris Pratt um, with the Raptors here. For some reason, my mouse wheel is having a bad day, so haven't gotten that replacement mouse yet. A third shell is right in the middle between the other two. A creature you don't recognize from a distance, but it's in a puddle of its own blood and it isn't moving. Well, we have a person, we have a beast. Let's see if we can help. So Sotol charges forward, though strays a little bit to the left, as if it's hoping that you'll change your mind before you ride into the Saurian. You allow it to do so and land on the ground between the two enemies. The man's voice turns to the laughter, and you realize that the dead shell belongs to a human, but a creature covered with fur. Don't worry, friend. I'm trying to scare it away from the Ibex. Oh, boy. So all this time, I just misjudged the situation. We could be nice. Just step away. I'm not going to help you die for a scrap of meat. Well, thanks for a lot for that. He takes a deep breath and looks at you, as if preparing for a harsh repost, but then shrugs and steps away from the corpse. The constant jumping hat of his with the loose jaws and dead eyes make it difficult to focus on his face. My home is this way. Creeks, are you coming? Before you answer, he turns around and heads uphill. The Saurian observes him for a bit, but you can't read anything in his eyes. Once you grab the reins and lead your mount forward, the beast doesn't waste any time. It puts the Ibex's head into its mouth. Wow. Okay, as if it's trying to swallow the entire creature at once. It's, that's not something I really want to mess with. You leave the pond behind and approach the woods. Even from a distance, you can see a distinct trail leading between the trees. It's not a forest garden, but it's not bad. With every word, the man's voice gets more cheerful. It's not that gloomy, and I haven't even seen a cat there this year. But with no cats, there are boars there now. And, there, and as there are boars, there are also more gargoyles. He sighs, his steps get lighter. And so he leaps forward and bows to you, showing you the tip of his furry hood. Better not go too deep, kind traveler. There are no roads there. I hear the crickets. How many? We got four or five hours before dusk, so this must be the mountains where dusk comes a little earlier. His face is not much older than 20, shaved with great care, cleaner than among city folk, while his hood is heavy, cloak masks his figure. He seems well-fed and healthy. So, I think this is... I'm not a pathfinder. The wilderness is for me, though, so we'll never know where the path leads him. Aye, the spirits can be nastier than a sack of ape shit. But from all places, I'll be glad to um, be glad to be led to creeks. We don't starve. The work is hard, but there are no merchants above us. That's a gorgeous place, you know. You'll love it. Oh, well, there we go. Don't ruin the surprise. The road is gentle, but the man is incapable of being silent. Every unusual tree seems to be tied to a story from his life, and he makes sure that you notice the first stream you cross on a new solid bridge. <laughs> One of many creeks, you see, he says with untamed amusement. A thin gorge leads you between the mountains. So, I was right about that. So this place is quite susceptible to bandits, but it also truly feels like the end of the realm. So here we go, the, the darkened map here. The first village I reached was Creeks. Wow. Let's look at the map here. So, yeah, game, you want us to go, like, down here and go to the tavern and stuff. We didn't. You follow a trail of a shout of laughter. Seven people, about 20 years old each, are gathered at the wooden bridge, leaning against the railing, bathing in the stream, lying in the grass. Pieces of clothing made of fur and leather are spread out next to cudgels and throwing clubs. Once the sound of hooves manages to break through the chattering, the curious young eyes, untouched by wartime, turn toward you, and an excited whisper spreads. The shells are proudly displayed, and the confident smiles are both inviting and challenging. How's water? The hunter greets his tribesfolk while stepping on the logs. Gentle and warm, says the man resting on his friend's shoulder. Caught any squirrels? There are paths leading in many directions, but the main road will take you uphill. So we have two options here, because when it's saying their shells are being displayed fully, it means they're naked. Ah, <sighs> well, let them be naked. The light dances on their wet hair, both on their heads and crotches, luring your eyes just as much as the revealed chest and muscular arms. Eh, this is definitely not like the city. You've interrupted not just their bath, the soul who's speaking with your guide is embracing another man as he's sitting behind him, while one of the women is keeping her arm around the waist of yet another man. You hardly see any wounds or marks caused by sickness. The harshest days of this group are still ahead. As you move your eyes from one person to another, they greet you with smiles and nods. 
and the ones you walk by on the bridge shift their stances, allowing you to see even more. Oh, well, they're exhibitionists too, then. Once you reach the logs, the hunter chuckles. Ha! Ah, seeking warmth. I, the young one here, thinks more about wooing than traveling and beasts, but that's good. It means they're healthy. They're vain as birds, though. You won't find much to talk about with them. As you look behind, you're not so sure he's right. Nod to the group and then follow the man. The palisade is as tall as the trees, but being placed on top of the crags makes it look impassable. What? Why is the gate closed? The hunter turns to the watchtower and repeats his question only louder. Maybe Ella is too blind to see we have a guest. I. A hardly visible guard with a female voice leans down from the tower. He's coming, Howler. Relax. Her shouts hint no patience towards him. The youth dine in the woods after a bath. Why would he close? The man glances at you. Let's get awkward. Who's Ella? Just my brother. He gestures for you to ignore it. And I'm Efren. So thanks to our parents, folks keep mistaking our names. But Ella has a stick in his ass and is as boring and nagging as a legless donkey. The souls from the tower hides again and the gate opens. And we enter the village. The sparse clumps of grass survive only on the edges of the spacious yard. The few onlookers wear working clothes suitable for their hard labor. They're carrying tools, planks, and logs. You're next to a large building of unusual shape, either a temple or a house or of gathering. It makes you think of a cabin that's been getting larger over the course of the years, with the section in the middle being darker and more crude than the outer ones. Oh, that's exciting. A slightly overweight man is standing in front of the building with open arms. Welcome to Creek's friend. His voice and eyes are gentle, but there's a vigor and stance in his gesture. Efren was meant to hunt, but I see he has brought a very unusual creature. The hunter rolls his eye. Don't embarrass me with this prattle, he raises his voice. I almost brought us an ibex, but this traveler was no help. Long story, at least I Oh my god, it's I helped you from getting killed. An, an ibex that got eaten in one bite? Ella's smile gets replaced by a raised eyebrow. I trust you made the right decision, friend. Well, I, you bet I did. Being close to 30 years old, he's one of the older souls around. Just like the other villagers, he has clothes made of animals, not plants. The leather pants and jacket are humble, but the shoulder cape reaching from his neck to elbows used to belong to a yellow elk. His brown skin is darker than that of a farmer, and as you look at the outstretched hands, they carry the marks of being cut by tools. And I'm Ella, the carpenter. He takes a step towards the fruit trees and invites you to move forward. Like most men in the village, he's cleanly shaved. How about I show you the rest of the village? It may be humble, but it's as beautiful as a blue starling. Well, we could be nice, we could be playful. I have an opportunity to see some of your booties. Booties. And just say sure. Oh my god, so this is the emo, the emo squall lion heart route. Alright, so let's just say sure. The men wait for you to continue, then look at each other and silence. Well, okay. You've seen some curious places already, no doubt. And much larger ones. Let's not waste our time, our guest time, brother. He turns to Ella, who adjusts his cloak and leans against the tree. I need to wash off the sweat. You know, from risking my life in the wilderness, Alfred complains to the carpenter that waves at you. See you later, friend. Ella rubs his hands and lets out a breath. Well, there's work to be done. New chair awaits me. He leads you to a humble working station placed at the edge of the square. The tools you notice are very simple, if not primitive. So what is it that you look for in our home? There's no more roads between our palisades. So, interesting. So it looks like if we're friendly, we tend to get a little bit more drip bleed of information. Whereas if we're kind of stoic, they just kind of dump stuff at us. So maybe this is a life lesson that if we add a little more honey, we'll attract some more flies. I don't know if that's what we want here, but let's see here. We could say I'm looking for supplies. The village is much older than you. Okay. Well, what's its story? What's the story of the village? He proudly raises a carving knife and gestures you to look around. It may be a it may be a young village, but there's a lot to say. With his story is bloated with names, relationships, a step by step description of the growth of the settlement and bothersome creatures, you get the gist of it. The settlers arrived here 25 years ago, so soon after one of the ten cities had fallen to the southern invasion. Most of them came from the capital, while some joined them along the way. They soon came to realize that none of the villages had enough space uh, or the will to host a few dozen refugees. 
The folks of Gale Rocks used to have much kinder attitude towards strangers than they do now, and they offered the newcomers to stay at the beach behind their village. Yet there was nothing for them to eat other than what they caught in the salt waters. They soon started their search for a land remote enough to not compete with the locals, and with the help of uh, the folks from Gale Rocks, White Marshes, and Old Pagos, and that's not, that's not a typo, that's an accent, hopefully you've caught that by now, and others. As Ellis states vaguely, they received enough wooden tools to turn this scrap of a plateau into a clearing, and then a camp, and then a hamlet, and finally a village. I love this. I try to pay attention. Let's try to be friendly. Fascinating stuff. The tale is assisted by walking around the village, introducing you to the original settlers or their offspring, and showing you some of the treasures displayed in the house's gatherings. A unicorn's horn found at the heart of the woods, a blue rock that's shaped and hollow like an egg and is darker inside, an arrow that hit a fright tape in the eye and knocked it down. Beneath each of them, there are names, stories, and memories. At the very end, Ella leads you back to his workbench, holding a hand of, a cons of his cons conspicuous stomach. To give his throat some rest, he turns the topic around. And what are the folks in Hovlevin like, friend? Foggy says there are thousands of souls in the capital, and one can go their entire life still finding new faces in the crowd. Well, we have some various options here, and if you want to pause and read them, that's fine. But to sort of build into... I think this is probably the best character answer for Kira, although there's a few of these that ring true, like the merchants getting richer, the priest being corrupt. No monsters on the streets, but the monsters are the people themselves. But I think this is truer to it to this point. It may be so, but my city is lonely. There are many people around, but all of them are too busy with their duties to share their lives with others. He nods. A few years back, we had a visitor who hoped to move in with us, saying that they were a stranger in their own land. We agreed, and they departed to Havelvan to pick up their things, but never came back. He sits down on his tools. Does this bother you, this loneliness? Well, I mean, I'm a road warden, so I hope it doesn't bother me that much. I, I couldn't. I need these folks. He looks at a few young people on the opposite side of the square. They were also observing the two of you, and now give you awkward smiles. Ella adjusts his shoulder cloak and asks if you need anything else. Oh. Let's, let's see if we can butter him up by asking him about his own job first. Oh, it's starting to get late. Okay, yeah, it is looking for sleep. This dude's going to be talking to us for a while. You have a healthy imagination. His rest is elbow on his workbench and smiles. I have patience, and I'm getting better with the tools. And these are some shoddy tools. He says, sighingly, and it's hard to disagree with him. They have been used for many years, with only the wooden parts being somewhat in shape since they seem to have been recently replaced. The steel chisels and saws are jagged and dull, and the hammers and axes are made of stone. Some of them were brought here by the settlers, and we can't buy any more right now. There's work to be done, but I do have a plan. You ask him to explain, and he's all too eager to do so. He enters a nearby house and shows you his more successful works, each of which has some shortcomings, noticeable even to a layperson. A bowl engraved with a fish was poorly planned, with animals too large to fit in the entire space, and so part of it is blank. A simple refill of, or leaf of two naked people in their embrace looks almost believable, but the legs in one are too long and the other are too short. Are we talking like Rimworld sculptures now at this point? One chair has a broken leg, and the remaining three show that they're a bit too ambitiously shaped and got dangerously thin. And the chest seems fine, but equipment sticks out of it, and the man acknowledges that he wrongly estimated the required size. Oh, well, there we go. So you want to be an artist. Better. I want to turn my pots, cups, weapons, cupboards, everyday stuff into things of beauty. Seeing your luck, he pats his stomach. I know I'm far from mastering it, but trust me. There are so much better things than uh, the ones that I did this winter. And I started only three years ago. His pride makes him look even larger, especially the shoulders. There aren't many carpenters in the peninsula. Folks do things for their own use. But I'll be a specialist. It's the city thing. Foggy told me so. Not just a jointer, but someone who does only a few things, but better than others. The tribe supports me with food and time, and I'll pay them back with dragon bones and prettier houses. When he leads you outside, you start to share some of his excitement, but most of it dwindles away after you sit down as work mention again. On, shod on wobbly stools surrounded by broken planks and crude tools. Can y'all get a sense of what's going on here yet? Because I have some thoughts, but I'll share them after we're done talking here. We can't seek shelter yet, but it looks like the day is winding down. Let's ask about Asterion now. 
He halts his work and looks at you with an exaggerated frown. Huh, that's a weird question. You're the first road warden I've seen in, well, a season, I think. Did you check with the western villages? You'll get to Howler's Dell simply by staying on the road. His right hand still holding a tool is now squeezing his stomach gently. Interesting, that's a kind of evasive answer. I'm looking for supplies, that's for, that's true. At first he offers you a fine barrel or a stool, but after you explain that you prefer something useful for a traveler, he returns to his work, then you should speak with Foggate or Tavern. You rode past here before, maybe old Hava has some food to spare, but I doubt it. What about the peninsula? Our tribe won't be much of a help here, he admits. While judging the harsh surface of a plank, it's our parents who did all the traveling, and they did so while we were kids. We're not yet born. Most of them are already gone, and most of us travel no farther than the Foggies, and only when we have to. And there's a key detail there. These are not the people that built this village. These are the inheritors of the village, and I think that could potentially be a problem. Um, what do you think about Efren? He gives you a surprised look. I care for him deeply. He's brave. He has a big heart. But both are past are rough. I don't think you need to hear about him. So he doesn't trust me yet. Some issues with the eastern path. At first he gives you a bright smile, but then he nods with a sigh. Aye, aye. <sighs> so our issues are so clear that folks gossip about him. I'm glad you came to our help, friend. But it doesn't feel right to admit we need help from an outsider. He stands up slowly, walks away, and leaps over one of the log-made tables and looks for something in a pile of wood. This is the part of the land that's always going to be something to do for a road warden. He straightens up with a piece of charred wood in his hand and gets back to you. As he draws black lines on the workbench, he mentions a few names. Creeks, foggies, gales, rocks there. Here, here's the lake. The map is simplistic and doesn't align with your own understanding of the local distances, but you follow its description without issues. The path from here to the south is getting too wild for us. He repines, making a few strokes. The merchants travel through the other route, through Haller's Dell, passing by Old Pagos and White Marshes. Once they reach Foggy, they have already got full stomachs and many deals closed. When they travel back, they visit the same places again. Folks already know that trading here takes a long time. So you want me to give them an option to get, you, to, get to you first? Well, I'm sure you can find some help. He pats his stomach without noticing that he's seeing a few black dots on his leather jacket. There's a few things you could do. Follow the eastern road and see if it's clear. <laughs> well, we know that already. Are there any safe shelters left? Any blockades to get rid of? Is there an overgrown path to burn? Maybe see if the road from here to the western crossroads is safe. Or if the carts could get through the heart of the woods. If you're brave enough, I hope you, you're a soul of sage judgment. Seeing your puzzled look, he rests his palms on the table with a shy smile. I know, I'm vague. But I bet you already know more about these roads than I do, friend. His eyes return to the map. After a moment of hesitation, he rubs an uneven line with his thumb. You forgot to mention pay. Let's not go for pay first. I know, I'll be honest with you. I. He looks at you in silence and then clenches his stomach. Can't, most likely. But the more news you bring us, the farther away from the village our foragers and hunters will be willing to roam. Foggy's boys as well, I expect. Sooner or later, the truth will surface, and I'll advise my tribe to take a lesson from whatever we're about to find. What about pay? That depends on what you're about to do. I, the tribe, has but a few dragons. He to, 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 uh, excuse me. To confirm his words, he enters a nearby house, from which he picks up an old wooden case, crude in shape, and with an unsightly engraving on a three-headed hydra on its lid. Inside, you see maybe two dozen dragon bones. Let's say you'll get a dragon for any real news, clear to blocked areas, and more if it takes real effort from you. So you want me to act first and pick up my reward later? Uh, I think that's fair. So just action, and once I complete that action, you owe me money. Alright, so... When would you like me to start? Go to the shelters just to the side of the road. There's a ruined campsite west of Foggy's. He makes a small circle on his map. Or you could go south to a cabin our elders built. It's halfway from here to the river. Take a look around. You'll see what condition it's in. If there's any beast around, you can handle a few small creatures, can't you? That's fine. So he flashes you a wide smile and uh, pats his stomach. Apparently, he really is he pregnant. He really likes his stomach. You won't regret this. He then throws away the charred wood. Oh, good job, bro. And returns to his stool and looks for his tools. So... We do already have a note here. I took I took a look at the dolmen to the south at safe. I encountered a fallen... Ooh, we already got some stuff here. But see, it's kind of interesting because this is a campsite of kind of the Lost Boys, except Peter Pan never showed up, and now it's just people that are 
we're young and nobody's left here and they're kind of on their own devices so I'm really gonna have to try to help them but we do have some information at this point I cleared a statue at Foggy's place that woman with the stick seeing your nods he stops his work what for okay well he's an artist you can admire her you can turn the rock I thought you might care the carpenter glances work much. I don't think we need a pile of rocks, but I'll see what you mean. I'll ask around. He tells one of the kids of the square, bring our guests some dried meat and nuts. What? I'm not paying for that. Oh, well. There's no dragons without results. I took a look at the dolmen to the south. It's safe. He keeps sculpting wood and asks you about the size of the entrance to the chapel. I've heard it's small, but it's not that small. Not enough for a group, but maybe a lone traveler. Without a mount. He looks at you with a smile. Pick a dragon bone from the case, won't you? I don't want to stop now. He reach, you reach toward the ugly head of the Hydra. If he's not looking, nah, he'll know. So just grab a coin. We're not going to cheat him. We got money! Well, that's a start. So he encountered a fallen tree of the south. You describe its exact location. I guess it wasn't unavoidable for this to happen at one point or another. Too bad it's so far away from here. He stops his work and turns towards you. So would you like to help... Would you like to help us with that, friend? You ask him what he proposes, and he describes what he calls a day of honest work. Just come to me someday in the early hours. I still need to discuss this with the tribe, but I'll ask the stronger folks to travel with you to the tree. They'll agree if they feel the roads can be trusted. Split it into blocks. Get it on the wagons. Bring it here. It won't go to waste, and the road will be cleaned. When you mention that it's going to take an entire day, he agrees, and you'll get five dragon bones for it. Just come to me when you're healthy, and only if you already know what's on the route from here to that point. We'll put a lot of trust in your guidance and protection, Kira. So... I think that's fair. So we have to know the entire route, make sure it's safe, and then come here in the morning only if, it can, only if I can handle the journey. That's fine. He thinks about your word, reaches in his case. You're right, that's a lot. I can't help you much, but at least you deserve one bone right away for bringing me the message. Maybe buy some rations for it or a good rest. Actually, we also need at least one day to prepare ourselves, so we can't do that tomorrow. So I think that's it for him. So we do have some other people to talk to here. It's three o'clock. We have some traveling we can do, but we are truly at the end of the realm. And we may be trying to seek shelter here. I'm, I'm curious if we go around here. It's going to take some time to travel. I think we may have a little bit more exploration. But then we can try to get to one of these places at the end of the day. I think that's fun. I think that's fine. So we have a little bit more work to do here. If we go to the shallow creek, can I take a bath here? Um, I could jump into the stream. I won't get any cleaner here. Okay, so we're, we're not going to keep our obsession with taking a bath right now. Um, that'll do it for this one. This is Asher with more Road Warden. I thought we'd be done with the day, but it turns out we're just enjoying a nice leisurely stroll through the land. But we do have some concrete goals for us now. If we can assure that there's not wolves and there's not some other stuff here, then maybe, maybe we can clear the fallen tree. But that's going to do it for this one. This is Asher. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the positive feedback and thoughts. I really appreciate the comments. Um, it does it does mean a lot. Like I said, this is very different from the kind of stuff I usually play, but it's a game I also am very much enjoying, so all the better. I hope you all are having fun too, and uh, I'll see you next time where I promise the day's going to run out at some point, and we're going to have some fun, I hope. You all take care.